Hello everyone and thank you so much for joining us today. I am Gretchen Cook with Parents and Kids Media and we've been spending some time during this COVID crisis checking in with different community partners to find out what's going on with them during the COVID crisis, how they're dealing with it, and what messages they have for the public. <clears throat> today I'm really lucky to have a really neat organization represented here. I have with me Catherine Martin and she is the uh, Administrator for the Ballet Magnificat School of the Arts. Welcome, Catherine, and thank you for coming today. Hi, thanks for having me. Well, it's always exciting to talk to, um, to organizations from the arts because arts are so important for childhood development and, and for the community in general. Tell me a little bit about Ballet Magnificat. Yeah, so Ballet Magnificat started in 1986. Kathy Thibodeau had a vision to have a uh, professional Christian ballet company um, and she had already had a career as a professional dancer and so she was just continuing that career in the Christian realm um, and so started with the company and then now it's expanded for the past you know 35 years um, to we have a, a trainee program which is a pre-professional post high school program so those students are hoping to get into the company one day and then mm -hmm. um, we also have our School of the Arts, which is what uh, my heart is for, what I really enjoy. And um, that's all of our school age kids who come in the evenings for the ballet classes. And then we do have um, a few summer camps too. So we're, um, we are really passionate about sharing the gospel through dance. And um, like you were saying too, just being involved in the arts and, and seeing the way that that affects the kids also. Um, particularly in the School of the Arts and with our summer camps and things like that. I think I lost my uh, audio here. Oh, okay, here I am. There you are. <laughs> Sorry about those technical difficulties. We are live and live is always interesting. We were worried about dogs barking earlier, but it's going to be technical things. So, so, um, Catherine, tell me a little bit about what the word Magnificat means. Yeah. So that Keith Thibodeau is Kathy's husband, the, the woman who started by Magnificat. And he was reading in Luke when it talks about Jesus's mother, Mary, and, um, it's called the Magnificat when she's praising yeah. the Lord. And, um, so we just really wanted to include that in our name, kind of as a reminder where our goal is to magnify the Lord through everything that we do. So through the, the professional company's performances and even in our ballet classes and the, the teachers with the students and just everything that we do, trying to, um, to magnify the Lord. And it's cool because magnifying something doesn't mean that it's small and that you're making it bigger necessarily. So if you think of like, um, you know, a telescope, if you're looking at a star from far away, the star is huge, but you can't, you might not quite be able to see it unless you have a telescope or something like that. So just that idea of the Lord and like his greatness, and then us just trying to like show that yeah, in a tangible way. That's a, that's a beautiful analogy. I really like that. I'm, I'm sorry, but we go into verbal shorthand and we call it ballet mag a lot, mm -hmm. but it's really ballet magnificat. And that, I just love that beautiful word. Now, if you don't mind back up and tell us a little bit about how COVID-19 has affected the school of the arts. Yes. So, um, we, we you know, we're planning to continue our school year through the rest of March and April and May, like everyone else. And we had a recital scheduled for this weekend um, at Jackson Prep. And so the, the girls were gonna do Alice in Wonderland performance. Um, and so we've had to cancel our all of our in, uh, in studio classes for April and May, and we had to cancel our recital. So they have been doing some Zoom classes, um, which is you know a little bit different, but everybody's doing the best they can. We're thankful for Zoom, we're thankful for technology. Um, just to be able to still have some face-to-face -face interaction with the students. And um, yeah, and the company of course had to cancel, they were supposed to go to Europe in April. So they had to cancel that. I think it was a six week tour. Um, all of our trainees who are from all over the world really had, you know, could we didn't have classes for them either. So everything's really been on a 
complete standstill um, since spring break. So it's been crazy. I know. I know that must be so disappointing, especially the recital and also the, the European tour. I am so sorry, those, but I, there's a plan here. Things will get Wait. back to normal. Well, y'all are already looking ahead to the summer. Can you tell us a little bit about um, what Ballet Magnificat is planning to do and how it's going to work over the summer? Because parents, you know, they're still looking for summer opportunities for their kids. And, and you have one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Lord willing, um, we'll have three different opportunities for different age groups to, to train with us this summer. So the first one, um, and of course these are all tentative depending on different regulations, but um, our junior dance intensive, we're hoping will be June 14th through the 20th, if possible. Um, so that is from nine to 15 years about, that's, you know, we can wiggle a little with the ages. Mm -hmm. um, and so this would be more for students who have trained for a few years, but might not be to a level um, that our summer dance intensive, which we'll talk about in a minute, that's for a little more advanced. So this is maybe, or they're not, they don't want to commit to more than a week. They just kind of want to be intense, but not too intense. <laughs> um, yeah. And so that will be, um, yeah, Sunday through Saturday. And so they'll dance from three to 8.15 every day. Um, and they'll have a little performance at the end with the dance that they learned in the studio. Um, so we're hoping to be able to do that. And um, so that's for students who have a little bit of training. And then we have um, our dance camps, which will be much later, July 27th through the 31st. And we'll have three different age groups for that. So there's a three to four year old age group, and then five to seven, and then eight to 12. So this would be for, um, you know, if you've never danced before, if your daughter dances around the house and you think, well, I don't know if she actually wants to take class, but maybe she does. This is the perfect opportunity. Um, and so the younger kids will come in the morning and then the five to seven is a little later and then eight to 12 is in the afternoon. So that's a really good opportunity to just kind of try it out and see, you know, they might like dancing around the house, but do they like it in a more structured environment? And um, I will say that most of them do. <laughs> Once they get there, they, they don't wanna leave. Um, so it's just a good trial run without any big commitment. Um, mm -hmm. And they, they'll do crafts and things like that and um, learn a little bit about, you know, what, what is worship as dance and, mm -hmm. um, you know, the difference between that and just dancing for yourself. Um, so that's a great, a great option. And then um, our summer dance intensive is our big workshop that um, we do every summer. So that will be hopefully June 27th through July 25th. And so that... Um, that's a more intense um, time of training for a little bit older dancers, people who've had more time learning and training. Um, so, so yeah, Lord willing, those will be our, our three different groups. So you've covered it from little girls or what, which, which I would think of as what I would call twinkle toes, <clears throat> little girls who just want to go and maybe have a tutu and, just really learn about using their body to move to music and, and, and you would incorporate worship in that. And then to some who've had a little bit of training and then others who really might seriously be wanting to pursue a career as a ballerina. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So that, so recap that for me, if someone is talented and gifted in this way and has the discipline and the drive, Ballet Magnificat is a professional dance company. Yes, yes. So we have um, our professional touring company, which under normal circumstances would, would tour about two weeks out of every month is what it averages out. Um, and so, yeah, they'll tour internationally, nationally, really anywhere. Um, anywhere people want a performance, they'll go out. So that's their job as a, a ballet mm -hmm. dancer. Um, yeah. Now, I think we were chatting before the live stream started was that your path to where you are now? Yes. Yeah. So that's how I ended up here in Mississippi. Um, okay. Moved down here in 2009 and was a part of the training program. And then um, also toured with the, the professional touring company. And then I just stopped dancing in August and moved into this administrative role. So um, they don't call it retired, do they? They do. <laughs> 
like, no, 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 you can't be retired. You're, you're much too young. Um, on to my second life. <laughs> on to your second life. Well, talk a little bit about why dance and even physical movement is important to kids. I know right now a lot of parents are very concerned about how much screen time kids are getting. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, any parent can attest to trying to get the wiggles out of their kid or, um, you know, trying to wear them out for the, the end of the day. And so I think it's super helpful to be able to kind of hone in that desire to move and, um, to use your muscles and to figure out how to, how to use your body, um, in a structured environment. And I think that it helps a lot, like just having, um, other kids around and seeing like, Oh, we're all trying to do the same thing. And, and to see, especially the younger kids as they're learning, they can kind of teach their body how to do things and to see that like, Oh, I told, I told my leg to do that and it did it. You know, it, it gives them a sense of pride and accomplishment. Um, and and ballet is a really cool integration between arts and athleticism. Um, mm -hmm. And we all know the benefits of, of um, physical movement and activity and just how that helps our, our physical bodies, but then also the artistic side of how am I portraying this character or how am I getting this feeling across or this emotion across, which even as little kids, um, like in our recital that we were going to have, some of the kids were uh, going to, portray a croquet game and so they had to be excited that the ball went over there or just you know what is that emotion and what does it look like so it's ballet is, is really neat because it's not just um a physical exercise you know it kind mm -hmm. of encompasses every part of you which is really special now to clarify ballet magnificat isn't just for girls correct yes i do keep saying girls <laughs> but it's it's definitely not we have um I think we have four men in our professional company um, and then some men in our training program. And we do have some boys in our school. Okay. Now I know I've heard stories like about NFL football players taking dance lessons off season. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot to be said about learning to center your body and control it. And mm -hmm. that could work for any age group. Do you ever have any special needs kids enrolled? You know, we don't right now. Um, we haven't had a lot of uh, uh, questions about that, but that would be a really good thing to explore in the future. Okay. Now, listen, if some parents are interested in contacting you and finding out more about what's going on over the summer, um, can you give us your web address? Yes. So www.ballemagnificat.com, and then you can click on the school tab on the top and there's mm -hmm. a place for you to register for the fall classes or look at the different dance camps um, in the summer. And then, um, yeah, we'll be, hopefully we'll be back in the studio next week, the office staff. So um, okay. you can always call us at 601-977-1001 um, with any questions or. Okay. We'll, we'll recap that in just a minute before we log off, but tell me, um, I know your camps, you said they were tentative right now, but, I, but as things are gradually reopening, I, I know you want to get back there. What sort of uh, precautions or protocols are y'all going to have in place for COVID-19? Yeah. So we're, we're trying to stay up with all the current regulations and um, restrictions and things like that. So we're planning on, um, taking people's temperatures when they would come in in the morning. If they have any symptoms, you know, they can't enter the building. Um, keeping distance between the students within the rooms, not letting them, um, you know, any breaks that they would have, they would need to stay in the room, still distant from each other. Mm -hmm. um, having hand sanitizing stations, and we will be um, sanitizing in between if we have different groups on the same day in between any group, we'll need to sanitize. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, we're, we're, we're trying to keep up with the different guidelines as they come and see where we'll be. Um, yeah. Now this is a, a random question. I'm just getting interested in the topic. I know for almost every profession, there are professional associations that form about that subject. Are there professional ballet associations and are they issuing guidance on this sort of thing? You know, I, it's really interesting because so much of this is led by the states. 
it's mm -hmm. um, it's been difficult for us because as far as I know, we're one of the only professional ballet companies in Mississippi. So our guidelines are different than Texas or New York. Um, so right. we've, we've been checking on um, some of the bigger ballet companies to see what their plans for the summer are and how they've decided to proceed. And everyone's different, um, which is the hard thing about it. So uh, yeah, we've explored all different sorts of options for how to how to continue training in the summer, what's the safest, best way um, to be wise, but to also, you know, try to do something, provide some sort of activity and um, fun thing for especially the kids to do over the summer while still not, you know, we don't, we definitely are not looking to, um, you know, make this any worse than it is, this whole um, right. experience. But, well, I'm just so glad y'all are thinking through these things and coming up with ways to safely teach dance, even to the little little ones who just, like you said, are dancing around the house and they might want to see if they're really interested in this. All the way up to your people who really have a career in mind. Mm -hmm. um, to lose this much time if, if you're playing on a career, I know must be painful. Yeah, it's definitely hard. Hard for those older students, for sure. Yeah. Now, um, for the people who are interested in the summer camps, you've got three different variations going on. What's your website again so parents can go and check that out? Yeah, it's balletmagnificat.com. And I think we have a graphic um, for two of those camps, our junior dance intensive and then the, the princess camps and dance camps. Okay, so princess camp, talk about it for a second. That's for the little ones. Do they really get like a princess outfit and all of that? <laughs> Um, every year is a little bit different, the different activities that they do, but they do normally make a crown and um, they learn a lot about their identity, I think. And um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. And, and that's more so during the school year, it's a little bit more um, regimented. So they have mm -hmm. their uh, uniform that they wear, not uniform, but their dress code that they wear and things like that. So this is a little more relaxed. They can wear whatever leotard they want and skirt and um, okay. So yeah, they, they do little activities and, um, okay. So what are the ages for that again? So that is, there's a three to four class and then a five to seven class. So ages three to four mm -hmm. and then ages five to seven. Mm -hmm. And then okay. there's a, a dance camp, which is ages eight to 12. Also. Okay. Yeah. So you've got that. And then the next thing is the junior intensive. Mm hmm. Yes, and that's um, ages around nine to 15. So they need okay. to have two years of consecutive ballet training. Okay, so great. To, to come to that, we ask that they do have that. And they have a placement class for that. So the okay. first day, they'll take a little ballet class and see which level they'd be placed in. Okay, that makes sense. And then the last one is that intensive intensive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, so that is for ages... Uh, I want to say 12, all the way up to 24, actually. Right. Um, Depends on their training. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Well, it sounds like you're doing a lot to, to minister to the families in the area and to provide opportunities for kids. And I especially like opportunities that are uh, physical based because I don't know, but I think we're, it's been beautiful weather, so a lot of people are walking, but I think we're having a lot of screen time these days. Yes. So I, I really com commend you on all you're doing. Is there anything else you'd like to add as we wrap up? Um, I mean, well, I would actually like to add something about our our fall registration is open. And so we're, we're hoping and planning to start on August 31st for our fall semester. And so if anyone's interested, that same website, the same school tab, there's a registration tab within that and um, has our information about registering for the fall classes or just checking out the schedule, things like that. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Now, in the past, have those fall classes filled up? It depends. Some of the, the younger classes will fill up. Um, mm -hmm. So it really depends on the year. Okay. But it's still not a bad idea to go ahead and book your spot if you know that's yeah. something that means a lot to your child. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, audience, I uh, hope you have a chance to go check out the website and summer is coming and we really do have to find things for our kids to do. And we're going to be looking for more opportunities. But thank you, Catherine, for meeting with us here today and telling us about Ballet Magnificat. Yes, I love talking with you. Thanks. Thank you all for joining us.